Hello everybody and welcome to the Black Advancement. I am your host for today. My name is Ajiman Jasante Goodman. To my left is Dwayne Robbins. To my right is Greg Goodman. And today we'll be discussing the second portion of the Black Community section, the Black Middle Class Hidden Struggle of the Cosby's. Uh, before we get into it, I'm going to do an intro real quick to tell you what we're about. Black Advancement Incorporated is a movement that is built to uplift the Black community through dialogue and action. Before we get into the discussion today, I'll give a little background or a little front street information. Um, basically, the black middle class is kind of has one foot in one world and one foot in the other, at least speaking generally, where they have a situation where they may be involved in a mostly white environment, and yet being the only black person there, they don't fit into that world, and yet maybe if they know people from uh, the other side of town, so to speak, they don't really fit into that world either. So we're going to get into that and see if some way, somehow, this affects or helps uh, the destruction of the black community. So question number one about this discussion is, is this discussion outdated? And I'll start with Dwayne Robbins. <clears throat> I mean, I guess that's, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to take that question outdated. I mean, I think my, I would consider my family and all of our families part of the black middle class. So mm -hmm. would you say is we're going out of style or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. No, think that's more, more so, I guess, I guess we're, by asking that question, I mean, like, is that question even something that can be posed as a, as a topic of separation, I guess, between black people? Um, wow, there's so many things that cause separation. I think, I think this, that's one, I think this is one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have the, they always say the, black population has the crabs in the barrel mentality where we're always, you know, one's trying to succeed and we're trying to pull them back down. Although I don't necessarily think that's true all the time, but um, I mean, that's that's something that's been perpetuated in our community. So, um, like I said, I don't think it's ever an out of, out of style comment. Well, have you kind of felt that way where it's like you feel like you're in one world versus another? Um, I mean, yes and no. We just, that's just how life is for us. We have mm -hmm. to understand we have to, that's how we have to operate in, the, in, in that world. I mean, I'm able to, I guess, I have, don't have a problem operating either one of them. You know what you have to do, what the mm -hmm. criteria is to operate in e either one mm -hmm. um, in order to get the respect that you need it. Or need it. So, I mean, I, I like to think I've been successful enough, just successful, because I've been, I'm able to operate in both worlds, mm -hmm. you know. If, if you want to classify that, I mean, it's all one world. It's just that there are different criteria to be in, in each one and getting respect in each one. There's certain different things get you respect in each one where I guess the corporate or white world, you have to act a certain way, dress a certain way, um, be able to use certain things, be able to express yourself in certain ways. But then when you get into it, so I guess the black community, which I think is a misnomer because when you say you have to be able to, uh, I don't know what's the term, be able to, can't think of a term now where you got to be able to talk the lingo uh, of the street. You know what I mean? And I mean, can I do it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I have I have friends on all different economic strata, both right. black and white. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it really all boils down to treating people with respect. In in the to really be able to operate in both worlds. If you do that, then you're gonna you know it's gonna be you gonna be all right. I mean, it's just unfortunate that even though you act a certain way, you, you still he hit glass ceiling, especially operating in the corporate world. Although mm -hmm. it's getting better, I mean, we do have a black president, but still doesn't mean things aren't 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 aren't, aren't difficult when you're going through that in that when you're operating in that world. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Greg, do you think this discussion is outdated as far as talking about the black middle class is something that could <laughs> possibly help destroy the black community? Uh, no, I don't think it's outdated as long as um, the black race is in all three classes. <clears throat> In my opinion, the middle class has a, I won't say a, a more so an, a, an advantage, so to speak. I'll say they're middle class, generally, growing up in a middle class family can generally make you a more well-rounded person. Mm -hmm. Because um, in that situation, there are, you, you'll still be in schools, for the most part, where there are kids that live in, harsher neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you can mix and intermingle and, you know, be with them. Mm -hmm. And the one common dream that you will have with them, because most low-income inner-city people mm -hmm. are black. So that, that, that'll that give you that kind of connection, because you'll have that thing in common, mm -hmm. that single thing in common. Plus, when you're in a middle-class uh, neighborhood, there's generally not 
an abundance of black people. Right. But there are some black people, but there's also a lot of people of other races. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a, it's a huge melt, uh, melting pot, at mm -hmm. least now in this day and age. So you can interact with all kinds of other cultures. And then more than likely, when you're in a middle class family, your parents or father, mother, whoever it may be that, that is the breadwinner in the house, mm -hmm. more than likely you're going to have to intermingle with, at some point in your life, you're going to have to intermingle with one of their boss's affairs with them a family day so you get to see how the the better side of upper middle class lives as well mm -hmm. and interact with them and i mean if you're smart you can talk to them when you get a little bit older still talk to those people and see what took them to that area you mm -hmm. know to thrive so it makes you a more well-rounded individual in that aspect but uh, to answer the original question uh, no Okay. No, it's not outdated. As long as you have, as long as there's a race represented in all three uh, classes, then it shouldn't be outdated. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go to the website right now to the guy on the couch. Guy on the couch, man. Uh, what What are the responses to the first question? Okay. Question number one is: This discussion outdated. The first response comes from Dino Mike the Magnificent. He says, "I think this discussion is right on time." I believe that the black community is becoming more and more separated as we become more and more Americanized and obsessed with how much we do and don't have. A casualty of this Americanization is our ability to unite and live amongst one another regardless of our financial situation. We have been bamboozled into thinking that moving away from our people is equivalent to moving up in the world. I will admit that the neighborhood culture now is troubling and that in many cases, no one in their right mind would want to subject themselves or their children to such an environment. However, I feel that if we had another example in the neighborhood, the better of the neighborhood would be. Thanks, integration, but that's another topic. Back to you. Thank you. That was interesting. That's a dig at the end there. Um, <laughs> as, far as, as far as he's concerned, let, let's talk about that part of it. Like, as far as the... Uh, the idea of the black middle class, I guess, moving out of the quote unquote uh, black community, so to speak. Like, I guess, from the standpoint of an inner city type of thing, it's just using general, general generalities, I guess, in that way, saying that I most mean, black people are from the inner city type of thing. I mean, I can't, I can't comment on generalities. I can only comment on, on how my life is lived, mm -hmm. you know? Go on. I mean, my, my dad grew up in Newsom Park, which was it's considered a, the black ghetto in Newport News. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, his pa his parents worked hard, a lot of the families worked hard, and that's what they try to do, get their selves out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Because the things that go, the things that are pet perpetuated in those, in those types of situations aren't the best. Although back then, it was a little different because families looked out for one another mm -hmm. more than, than I think. It was think more they, of a community. It was more of a community. I mean, it was like, my dad would be like, well, if Mr. Briscoe caught me, mm -hmm. he would beat me and he would call my mother and my mother would beat me. Right. So it, right. was, it right. was a different dichotomy back then. So I, I think, um, so, so what, what the, the last uh, commenter said, the thing about integration, mm -hmm. I think that, that is more of the, an issue on what might have been and I don't want this to sound bad, but we lost some things through integration. That's fine. That's fair. I mean, like, we, we, did, we, we lost some things through integ integ integration as far as how successful we've been able to be. We have been as a, as a culture. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. The Americanization, of our, our, the Americanization of us as a people into this culture has made us align with what the, the general, what the wants are of this culture, which is greed, mm -hmm. selfishness, no compassion for others. And so I think that's what's been perpet what's, well, that's what's perpetuated by this by what we do in this country. And I, we've just eaten it up, just like anybody that comes here mm -hmm. and wants to be a part of this culture. You get you get swept up into that. And mm -hmm. so um, I think um, I mean I know I've talked to my dad about it, and he he's he's always t told me that I mean if you look at how they came up, the the teacher that used to be right. teaching them, they used to be college. Crowds gathered all these great thinkers who taught them, you know what I'm saying, and cared for them and made sure that all of them made it. Right. They, they, you know, they believed in 
making sure all of the kids made it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk to them, it's like, well, you know, so-and-so, if they got into the 12th grade and they weren't ready to go, guess what? They didn't let them get out of there mm -hmm. until they had the skills so they could be successful. And so when you look at our what our parents have done in their careers and the things they, the contribution they've made to, to the local, just to society in, in general, it becomes, it comes from that, you know, so much was put into them to make sure that they had the skills to be able to be successful. And I think, mm -hmm. Through, the, through integration, some of that gets lost because we have people that don't look like us that are teaching us, and they don't. It's obviously they don't care about us because you can tell by the disparity of of how we pass when you have standardized state tests and how we pass at such a lower rate than the general, rest of the general the white population. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Is, if 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 everything's supposed to be equal, we're supposed to treat each other equal. There shouldn't be a disparity, but is there it, is. is. Is that? I'm gonna come back. I'll come back to that yeah. in a second. I'll, I'll give. Uh, Greg, you know, an opportunity to jump in on this this topic as far as like this part goes, like as far as like not so much the you can get into the integration part as well, but uh, more so like what he was saying as far as like the Americanization of it and how people are moving outside of the the quote unquote uh, black black community portion itself and moving to the suburbs or something like that. Well, I mean, e either how do I word this? It can uplift and harm at the same time, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, reason for uplifting, it, it shows that so-and-so worked hard to get their money, to get the job, to move up, um, and their corporation and get their finances well enough mm -hmm. where they could move right. to a different location. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and have a single family house or, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. they, they got it together, they got their funds together, and made it out. That's on the plus side because it'll give other people in that neighborhood saying, well, if such and such can do it, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to do it. Right. But on the negative, when that does happen and such and such moves out and then other people move out and all these people are role models for this community, mm -hmm. all that's left over is, uh, I guess, the, the, without a better way to say it, is it, usually the bad apples. Mm -hmm. And their role models are people who are still in that neighborhood, but still have the same money mm -hmm. as the people who have moved out. And those people are usually pimps, drug dealers, and, and those sorts of things. Well, yeah, and plus, most of the people who make it up out of that situation usually have a family structure. There's a mother and a father, both in those homes. Mm -hmm. And that may be part of the reason why they make it out. So we're talking about taking strong families and placing them elsewhere or then moving out elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not like the old days where in a black neighborhood, because it was segregated, you had doctors, teachers, right. lawyers, right. mailmen, whoever, all in that neighborhood. And these are all people who cared about their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They would watch over everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're like the old uh, African proverb says, it takes um, a whole village to raise one child. Right, right. Well, if half the village moves, and that's the responsible half of the village, <laughs> then uh, you've got children running amok, and that turns into a vicious cycle in that neighborhood. Yeah. I, I forgot what I was asking from beforehand. We were talking about something. Oh, you, you said you want to come back to the integration portion? Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 like, I'm just saying, that's just my discussions with my father. You know, discussions that I'm fortunate enough to have with my father, and we talk about those type of things on how they look at certain things and how, I mean, like I said, it just, it's just the differences on, on how we, we were brought up and, and how I think to me certain, certain things that they have, I think it hurt us. Mm -hmm. It has hurt us as a people because, you know, the, certain, the kids that slip through the cracks now in, in our education system that look like us, I don't think would have slipped back through Right. Time, time, that's time, what I. That's what I wanted to. So that's what I wanted to ask you. It's um, just, and that, that's just what hap I guess what happened. You know, that's what happens with the coming of the assimilation, where you go from being recognized to be from being, you know, I'm black to I'm American. You know, right, I mean, right. and, and that's that's. I mean, and that, I guess that's that's the dilemma that that you run into is right. like, uh, am I black or am I American first? I mean, and, and how do you how do you caveat that because. 
Um, uh, that's easy. You try and catch a cab, <laughs> and you'll definitely find out what you are. And, 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 that, and that's the thing, and that's the difficult thing that I think most of us as, as, as black, African American, whatever you call yourself in this country, have a problem with is because, you know, we've gone and died in wars, fought for this country, for the freedoms that we have, and still to be mistreated, just, I mean, really based on the color of your skin, it yeah. just, it's almost, it's almost sickening at, at 2012 for that to be the case. I mean, when I look at, like I said, how, how President Obama is just, and I'm not saying you can't be, be, be dislike him, whatever, but when, when you just say things about him based on, you know, just because he's a black man, that's the reason why they're saying it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that just sickens me. It, it sickens me that, oh, the, the that, that I've had relatives go fight in wars, go back many tours, you know, to do that and then to still have that prevail in this country. Mm -hmm. Like like somebody can look at me and say, we haven't given enough to this country. When I just saw a, a statement on CNN where it says the white population is 22 times wealthier than the black population in this mm -hmm. country. And that's, I mean, to me that says it all right there. Yeah. It's like, I said, so how can a people who gave years and years of free service be that much below? I mean, we've given more well, than... To well, this country, it's that question right there, free service. <laughs> well, let me get back, let me get back to the, like kind of more. Of the oh, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's cool. It's cool because that's what the thing about the the, the topics that we have. Mm -hmm. A lot of them interweave. You can't really talk about well, black like, middle class without talking about immigration. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, like you can't talk about that without like, gentrification as well. And like I've always said, until this country truly is, addresses what slavery did to the relationship between whites and blacks mm -hmm. until we truly address that this mm -hmm. country is never going to achieve the greatness that it can really achieve if it actually believes in what the the forefathers wrote and if the forefathers really meant for be for everybody but you got to wonder because we've had to add amendments so even white women could vote mm -hmm. <laughs> then us to vote so you, you gotta i mean that's the, that's just the dilemma that, that we deal with yeah back to that back to that one point as far as and this is this is i think where the question of this actually becomes a little bit more valid mm -hmm. as far as the black middle class. Like, when you think about the idea that the achievement gaps in school or the economy itself, how wide of a gap that is, does that go back to the idea of people moving out of the quote unquote black communities into these other parts, you know, to where? You understand where I'm trying to go? I mean, with that? I, I guess you can, and yes and no, you can say that because I mean, I think we've seen as 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 I mean, it going for the American dream and what that is, you know, and the ideals you want for that is like you want to have your family in a safe place. <laughs> if the community that you you're in is not safe, yeah. I mean, who would not? Who, how can Everybody you fault? How can place, you fault yeah. someone for wanting to get away, not be in a situation where your family's safe? I mean, yeah, I can't. I can't fault anybody for it. so when so somebody talks about all oh, they moved out. It's like I can't fault somebody for working hard enough to make the money to get their their family out of that situation to to a place of safety. I, I can't fault them for that. Right. For as far as school goes. Like I said, back when the schools were separated, you notice that uh, education, at least as far as our people, mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely sure has fallen off since those times. <laughs> because, like you said before, there was a a certain care. There was a we gotta try harder and do better, and we're gonna make sure you try hard and do better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the least, at the least, you're gonna graduate. At the least, the bare minimum. Unless you're just a complete waste of time. <laughs> and that, that you have to will yourself to be a complete waste of time because you have so many people backing you to make us all move forward. Mm -hmm. But I said that's why I think that was a sign of integration. Once you separated, put us or, or mixed up everybody in the schools and you're busing kids to schools that uh, have teachers that don't want to teach them anyway because they didn't want them in the school in the first place. Yeah. That's where education and everything falls off. And we're a bit to blame too because we've taken all that whole fall off and us being mixed and becoming somewhat of the, I guess in, in, in most schools, from, a, from what I can remember, mm -hmm. us becoming somewhat of the more popular type rebels. When that, that began to happen, that image for us, it was uh, bad attention is better than no attention right. kind of thing. So once we've adapted that persona in school, 
and it's just flooded through everybody, which goes through the whole thing where like now when I was growing up going through school, like a lot of people was just like, uh, like I know he's studying, trying to be white. Yeah. He's not being a nigga. Yeah. He's not being one of us. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean, that's what that's turned to. So we've actually tricked ourselves into making these things. <laughs> I'm actually glad you said that because that leads us right into our next section. But before I get into our next section, I'm going to do a plug for the website, which is www.blackadvancement.com. Uh, if you don't, if you don't feel like you know enough about a topic to speak on it, go to our research section, and uh, you can find some. We put articles and stuff there, not slanting one way or another. It's just to better inform you so that you can answer questions better. Uh, also, I'm going to slug our book of the month. Our BA book of the month is Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, which fits, I think, perfectly into this topic. <laughs> if you haven't read it, it's an American classic. Um, you should read it. With that said, uh, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> 